Before we get into this discussion, please hit the subscribe button, please hit the like button, and please hit the bell notification. But today we're going to go out in the golf course, we're going to create this drill. People have been asking me about what I do when I look back at the golf ball. Now that, that was something some quite a few people have mentioned in comments regarding videos I've done in the past where I've talked about I'm looking back at the golf ball and we're going to discuss that a little bit more today. But this drill as well, it's for pure ball striking, it will ensure that your body is in the correct place to make sure strike's good, but it's a drill that you can take onto the golf course. Taking the drill onto the golf course is key, so being able to actually do it on the golf course and the actual act of playing is fantastic. So rather than it becoming a drill, it becomes more of a pre-shot routine, which again is, it's training you to get into the correct position as you're actually competing rather than trying to transfer from the range to the golf course. So let's head to the golf course and get this done then, shall we? So obviously we're on the golf course now, we're taking the drill from the range to the course, amalgamating that together to make golf more fun, more achievable and just all together better. So it's an iron drill we've been working on at the range, working on looking back at the golf ball. That's been mentioned quite a few times in my recent videos and a lot of people have left comments as I've mentioned before on what I talk about, about looking back at the golf ball. Now if I address this ball, I've got seven iron in hand. And I take my address position, as I'm hitting this golf ball, I want to feel as though I'm looking back at the golf ball. And when I say back at the golf ball, I mean as in away from target. So the target's up here, so I'm looking back from the target at the golf ball. Now what does that do? How, do, how can I take that drill? Let's just hit one. How can I take that drill from the range to the course? Oh, it's going to be a good day. <laughs> how can I take that drill from the course to, from the range to the golf course? Well, it's quite a simple one. The, the idea behind the drill is I want to feel as I look back towards the golf ball. So if I'm looking back at the golf ball, if I'm looking back at the golf ball, then I must be, I must feel as though my head is ahead of the golf ball, target side, so I'm looking back at it. Therefore, the byproduct of that is my swing centre, my centre of gravity, my mass, my, my large muscles, my body has moved ahead of the golf ball to allow me to look back. So I'm going to get the shaft to lean forward, I'm going to get a ball turf strike and get the compression we're after. So looking back at the golf ball is very much a sensational drill. I'm looking back at it to try and get the sensation of my body being ahead of the golf ball at impact. Therefore I'm going to control low point, I'm going to get ball turf strike compression. There's a word for you. If I'm ahead of the ball, I'm going to feel as though I'm going to compress it a lot better. Let me move the camera for you. So face on view. Address position, good, at impact, I want to feel as though I'm ahead, looking back, and you can see what that's done, if that was impact there, you can see now how the left wrist's flat, you can see how my head's moved ahead of the golf ball, my mass of my body, there's more this side of the line if you like, looking back at the golf ball, so I've taken loft off the club, then low point, where is low point? Low point's going to be in line with the left shoulder, so I'm going to hit ball as I keep turning, left shoulder goes back slightly. So low point's going to be here, in line with shoulder, and then release from there. So it's getting the feeling there that I'm looking back at that golf ball. Now that was exaggerated, of course it's not going to be, I'm not going to be as exaggerated as this, but I want to feel that. And when I'm on the range I can feel that as much as I want. Then I need to take it to the golf course. This is the key area we're going to talk about, is taking this to the golf course. Address position, good. Looking back at ball at impact, is that going to get a ball turf strike? Let's try. Absolutely. Ball was there, divots here. But take it to the golf course, how can we do that? I'm going to show you. For this you'll need Sharpie pen, golf ball. You need to colour in a dot on your golf ball, right in the middle, away from the text. Just colour in one dot, one dimple, as so. I then place the ball on the ground with a dimple on the left side of the golf ball. Now when I take my address position, I can see the dimple and I can see white of the golf ball around the left hand side of the dimple. 
as I take my club back, I don't want that white to disappear. I want to make sure I can see the same amount of white golf ball left of that dimple. Now, if the white side of the golf ball left of the dimple disappears, it means I've moved off the ball. So I want to continue seeing the same amount of white mound of golf ball to the left side of the dot or the dimple all the way to the top of the backswing and then possibly more on the way through. Let me move the camera to let you see how I perceive this. So as I look down at the golf ball, I can see there's some white to the left of the black dot. Now I want to maintain that to the top of my swing. And then when I move forward as my body turns, I'm coming down to impact. I'm seeing more white left of the black dot as I come down. If I go back to a dress position, there's a dress position. On the back swing, if I take the club back and the white golf ball to the left of the dot starts to disappear, then I've moved too far off it and I have to make so much compensation to get back to get ball turf strike. So I want to see the black dot or one dimple left of the golf ball, the white around the outside of the golf ball or outside of the dimple, I want to maintain that to the top of the swing. And as I come down, I'm starting to introduce more white left of the dimple and that ensures I'm getting ahead of the golf ball. So that was a good visual for you there to see how you can do that on the golf course. So you can practice this on the range, there's always a little line on your golf ball, your range golf ball, or, or, or use something because you can place the ball. At this time of year, we've been preferred lies. At this time of year in the UK, we get what's called a preferred lie, which means you, if you're on the cut fairway, you can lift your ball, clean it, and place it within six inches. So when you place it, you make sure you've got that black dimple or that black dot on the left side of the golf ball. Now, this is obviously for when we're hitting irons and golf shots off the ground because we want the ball turf strike. When we're on the tee, it's a different matter, so forget that because I know people will comment about that. You're clever, you guys. So when you take your preferred lie, make sure you leave the dimple on the left-hand side of the golf ball. So we've been up to the range, we've worked on that, we've got the left side of the golf ball, we've got the dimple there all the time. Perfect. Perfect. I can see that black dot every time I play. Now I come onto the golf course, I'm walking up, I come to my golf ball, and I can take my preferred lie and place the dimple in place. So I'm always aware of what I'm going to be doing or what I'm trying to achieve and I'm able to take that range session onto the golf course. If you couldn't, for some reason, take the preferred lie, you'd walk up to your shot and just pick a dimple. Pick a dimple because there's always one that stands out. So you just you keep an eye on the dimple. The dimples are slightly different coloured. There's, there's, there's shading on either side of each dimple, so you have to be a little bit more precise. But you can certainly use that. That's how we can take the range session onto the golf course. I address the ball, I'm aware of my dimple. As I've placed this ball just now, it's the number two exactly on the ball. We'll call it dimple. So there's black dimple, I can see that. Brilliant. Take a little drill up the top of my swing. Can I still see the same amount of white left of the dimple? Yes, I can. No, not any longer. No, yes. So I'm centered. And now is there more white left as I come down? Yes, there is. There's the drill. I'm able to do that in slow motion. I'm able to, before I hit this shot, so I could be on the course now, let's just place ball as if I'm on golf course. Here we go. I can see a dimple, left side, good. Is there white to the left of that dimple? Yes, there is. Up to the top. Yep, I can still see it and I can see more white. I can still see it, I can see more white, good. Step on, repeat that. There we go, ball turf strike, forward shaft lean, flat left wrist, body turning through, all because I was focused on a part of the golf ball to allow my body to react to that. I allowed my body to react to what I was looking at. Who'd have thought that, eh? Right, we're back. Here we go. I hope all that made sense. I hope that encourages you to be able to take your practice onto the course, understand how you can amalgamate your practice session and your course session, but also making the practice actually part of your game. So you're on the course now and you can, you can take the drill you've been working on, you can go into the course, you can adopt it there and then, and it becomes part of your actual game. It becomes real life. Fantastic. Guys, thanks for watching. If you've hit the subscribe button, I appreciate it. If you've not hit the subscribe button, please do that now. That would be fantastic. But the subscribe thing, that's big for me now. I would quite like people to hit that subscribe button a little bit more. Thank you.